been reading this book as a suggestion from uh, one of my friends, Connor. <clears throat> and it just so happened that this was also a gift that my mother-in-law gave me. And uh, so she got me this book um, back in December. And that was right about the time where Connor was suggesting that I read this book. And then I, I, I got the book. I didn't pay any attention to it. I didn't even really look at the title. And then I looked at the book and I was like, holy crap, that's the book that Connor was suggesting. So I've been reading it since. And a uh, very interesting book. The whole... I haven't finished reading it yet, but one part that I want to go over in this video is the uh, the experiment with the fox, with the foxes in the uh, in the fox farm in Russia. So in this section of the book, this is uh, page sixty three, and it's still part one, and I'm gonna read part of it, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. So here he's writing a hypothetical letter to uh, Darwin, right? So he says, I continue about a hundred years after you postulated the mysterious loss of correlation. A Russian genes geneticist named Dmitry Belave, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, was starting a long-term experiment with the Russian silver fox. You would have loved this experiment. It provides us with good evidence to explain those apparent jumps. And the jumps he's talking about is the evolution from, you know, from wolves to dogs. So kind of to break away from this, this little section real quick, <clears throat> the book suggests that we didn't grab the wolves and domesticate them and eventually turn them into dogs. The book suggests that they actually evolved into dogs kind of on their own kind of to find their own niche and so there's like a big jump between the dog and and the wolf so it's a little bit complex for me to explain because the book itself is it's it's just full of a lot more information than i'm given here so that's the jump he's referring to you would have loved this experiment it provides us with good evidence to explain those apparent jumps I love it because it eliminates a highly probable biological mechanism for self-selection of wolves into dogs. Belave was in charge of a huge uh, fox fur farm in Novisburg, and without any intention of doing so, he produced foxes with those same dog-like traits of floppy ears, uh, diestrous, basically two cycles per year, as opposed to wolves and fox, which only have one cycle per year, the females, and piebald coats. He began selecting silver foxes solely on the basis of their tamer behavior. Belave began this experiment because wild foxes are hard to manage on commercial fur farms. Even though these wild foxes have been bred in captivity for 80 years and raised and cared for by people, they were a problem. Foxes are difficult to keep in captivity the same way wolves or any wild animals are. They are shy of their keepers and run away from them, sometimes snarling. Or they hurt themselves by running blindly into walls or crowding together with other panicked foxes and overheating or suffocating. It is exactly the same kinds of problems people would have had raising taming, and taming wolves. So kind of to uh, trace back to the earlier parts of the book, he suggests that it would have been so impractical for the, for the ancient men to grab a wolf and try to domesticate it and do this for several generations. Uh, that's why he, he believes that uh, the, the theory that he has is that, um, that they, they themselves evolved into wolf, into dogs on their own. So anyways, getting, getting back to this part of the book. The behavior of nervous, flighty foxes illustrates wild type or natural behavior. This is exactly the same problem I outlined with the nervous, flighty wolves at the dumps. Belave and his colleague Lidmila had observed a variability in defensive behavior among the captive foxes, which they believed was in inheritable. If it was, they could select for it. Belave's initial study population uh, initial study population of 465 foxes 
randomly chosen from among thousands, reacted to people in different ways. 40% were aggressively fearful, 30% were extremely aggressive, 20% were fearful, and 10% displayed a quiet, exploratory reaction without either fear or aggression. But, Belave noted, even the non-aggressive foxes could not be handled without special precautions against biting, so that they, too, were virtually wild animals. The difference Belave sought between the captive foxes was flight distance. Flight is a hazard avoiding behavior, an essential component of wild animal survival. There are two measures, two measurable components to flight distance. One, how close you can get to the animal before it attempts to flee, and two, how, fa how far it runs away. Belave selected from among the quiet, exploratory population of foxes and bred a second generation. In succeeding generations, he selected even more strictly, finally to the point that to be selected, an animal had to willingly approach him. After only 18 generations, Belave had come up with naturally tame animals that had many of the behavioral traits of a domestic dog. They were different in several significant aspects from their unselected kennel mates. They reacted to people actively and, and positively. They would search for their keepers, climb on them, take food from them, sit on their windowsills looking for someone to approach, roll over to get their tummies rubbed, and let people carry them around and give them their shots. They answer to their names. They behave like dogs. Even more surprising, they look like dogs. Their tails turn up at the end like dogs. Their coats were often piebald. Uh, their ears dropped. And the females came into heat twice a year instead of once. Belave noted they even sound like dogs. What is important is that Belave did not select for any of these traits. He did not even want some of these traits. Who would want a black and white piebald fur coat? Most of the other traits he didn't particularly care about, and he never anticipated any of them. It didn't matter to the fur coat industry if the foxes had floppy ears or barked. These dog-like traits appear mysteriously, unpredictably, spontaneously, if you will. Would it not be fair to say that because Belave kept on selecting foxes for tameness for 18 generations, thus augmenting their, this peculiarity? he did almost certainly modify unintentionally other parts of the structure owing to the mysterious loss of correlation. Now, Mr. Darwin, I hear you thinking, but this is a great example of artificial selection. Which animal is selected to reproduce is under the control of people. People are selecting foxes for tameness and they get the bizarre features by the mysterious laws. If people have been selecting wolves to be tameable and trainable, they also might have got richly patterned coats, floppy ears, all of the rest. Well, sure, they could also have got richly patterned coats and floppy ears, but by all the rest, do you mean small teeth, skulls, and brains? Belave never mentioned any reduction in sizes among his transformed foxes. If he had found that these dog traits were also part of the fox to dog saltation package. Then I have to adjust the argument. I'm assuming that small body size and small heads, brains, and teeth are products of natural selection and are not saltations. If they are part of a saltation resulting from selection for tame, then I could not discriminate between natural and artificial selection. Belave's work appeals to me because it provides real evidence for the transmutation of wolves into dogs by natural selection. It provides evidence that fits observable facts. The Pinocchio hypothesis of dog evolution requires that tame be a learned adaptation by individual wolves. So basically what he talks about, what he refers to in the, in the Pinocchio uh, effect is that, um, you know, basically just like the tale of Pinocchio, he wasn't a real child. He, uh, you know, just by magic became a child. So that's the Pinocchio effect with wolves turning into dogs. It's like they're wolves, and then by magic, they just turn into dogs. Whereas this argument is more like, you know, they themselves um, 
evolved into dogs by by selection and by picking specific uh, niches. Again, uh, I'm making it way way oversimplified. The book itself does a really good job at explaining this in much more detail and much much better than than I explained it. But I thought this <clears throat> this experiment with the uh, with the fox is very interesting. This is something I, I've heard about. A lot of dog trainers are aware of this. And I just thought it was fascinating and worth sharing.